Hi, I'm Bill and you're watching the Astro Vagabond channel. Well, it's a cold, windy day here in San Mateo, California. I understand they're getting some snow possibly up uh, in Northern California, up in the Trinity Alps area. And um, it's gonna be a cloudy night uh, tonight for the next few nights. And talking about cloudy nights, I thought this might be a good time to share uh, my thoughts on the economics of the ASI Air Plus. I often see on cloudy nights uh, a new person wants to get into the hobby. Um, they have some concerns, you know, what should they purchase? Uh, oftentimes uh, they have a limited budget. They're trying to make that limited budget work. And, um, you know, you, Great place for recommendations, cloudy nights. Um, but this is, uh, you know, recently I saw someone said they're cheap. <laughs> and uh, that's all okay. Uh, you have the money that you have. And, uh, you know, just try and do your best with the money you have to put together something that meets your expectations. And if you don't set your expectations beyond what your budget could actually uh, deliver for you, uh, then actually you can have a lot of fun, not be disappointed and not be frustrated. So I thought I'd share an idea with, this is kind of geared to maybe new people or people that are considering adding a second scope and they're wondering, you know, uh, what should they do? Um, I'm gonna share with you what I have here and uh, and these three pieces of equipment uh, were at one time part of my Xenostar uh, Z61 configuration, uh, but now I've moved them over to the um, uh, Edge uh, HD8, and uh, that enabled me to purchase a uh, ASI Air Plus uh, to replace three components that I'm going to uh, walk through here uh, with this one uh, component. And so now I'm, I'm running this on uh, my uh, Xenostar uh, Z61 and uh, in full transparency, I just ordered, placed an order for a second ASI Air Plus uh, that I am gonna incorporate in, in this configuration. So um, my approach uh, to uh, imaging was, um, initially I worked with, uh, um, Oh, I forget the name of the app, uh, EOS or something. It was uh, worked with my DSLR uh, camera. And I, I basically started with uh, my laptop here as being the um, method of controlling uh, the software uh, I was using. And, and uh, I tried APT for a while. I tried uh, uh, SGP or whatever for a while, but I ultimately wound up on Nina. And so what I would do uh, initially is I would run uh, Nina on my laptop and, and all my devices would uh, plug into my laptop. I had a little unpowered USB hub and, and that's really how I got started. And then I decided to uh, improve my configuration a little bit. So I decided I wanted to go with a mini computer and so what I have here is a B-Link U59 uh, mini computer. And then uh, I decided I needed to be more mindful of how I was managing all my USB connections. So I purchased a Pegasus Astro Pocket Power Box Advance. And then um, I needed some way to attach uh, my laptop here to my B-Link, so I purchased this uh, GL.INET uh, Burl router. So I'm gonna give you a, a, an idea of, of what I paid for everything. So this was the least expensive part of this configuration, and this was $72. The Pegasus uh, Astro Pocket Power Box Advance was $329, that was the most expensive of these of these three items here and then my b-link uh, u59 came with windows 11 was uh, 270 dollars so effectively here i had 
six hundred and eighty dollars uh, of gear that I purchased, and um, and I was still basically managing it with my laptop. I need I still needed a laptop connect the laptop to the wireless router, the burl is connected to the wireless router, and through a remote desktop connection, I could manage uh, uh, Nina, which was running on the uh, B-Link U59. Um, later, I found out I could use my uh, tablet. Uh, Chrome remote desktop uh, would enable me to connect to the B-Link and manage, although, um, I liked working with a, with a keyboard uh, more. Uh, this was good using the uh, tablet to connect with Chrome remote desktop for a monitoring during the night. And uh, I even was able with remote, uh, re Chrome remote desktop to use my phone to attach to the B-Link. But uh, where I'm kind of going here is these three components cost me $680, and that's not including tax. And, you know, I'm like everybody else. Um, I don't want to spend more money than what I have to. I tend to be a, a value-based person. I try and purchase things based upon their value. Uh, and uh, so that was $680. And then, you know, along comes the ASI Air Plus. And for $299, and me living in California, I think with tax is $332, but uh, $299 replaces my wireless router, my Pegasus Astro Pocket uh, Powerbox Advance, which was uh, you know $329, and my B-Link U59, which was $279. So you know what I'm trying to share with you are the economics of uh, the ASI Air Plus relative to going in the direction that I went in with a nuke or people call it a nuke or a mini computer uh, power distribution and USB hub and a separate wireless router. So what is that a savings of uh, 380 bucks and now what did I lose uh, uh, doing this? Well, I lost some things in a sense. There are many things about Nina that I like and I'm going to continue to use Nina in, in this configuration here. When I get my second uh, ASI Air Plus, I'm going to mount it right here and I'm going to have both available to me and those times that I need the features of Nina. Uh, I'll fire up Nina, and for those times I don't, uh, I'll use the uh, ASI Air Plus. Um, and over time, you know, we'll see which way uh, I wind up going. Do I stick with both of them? Do I choose one over the other, or whatever? But but where I was trying to go was, you know, we all want to try and uh, conserve our budget dollars and place it on those things that, uh, that really matter. And, uh, you know, every day when I go to cloudy nights, I see a new person talking about the budget that they have. It's kind of limited and they're trying to make it go a long way. So if, if you're in that situation, if you're a, a new person, you know, just trying to get up and running and trying to identify your, um, your equipment that you're going to want to use, um, you might want to consider uh, this purchase to start with, $299, rather than trying to uh, build out uh, something like you have here and many people use with a nuke, a power distribution, and USB hub, and a, and a wireless uh, router. Uh, just something to consider. It might allow you to take some of your budget and spend a little bit more on optics uh, or maybe a better set of filters. So you save some here, allows you to use it there. So um, that's just a thought. Now, the other thing I wanted to mention, uh, the economics of uh, uh, ASI Air Plus, uh, there's a power side. So when it comes to managing my ASI Air Plus, I use my Samsung 
tablet and this consumes a lot less power uh, than my HP 13 inch Spectre laptop. Um, the number of watts to uh, operate the tablet versus the laptop is considerably different and me being a traveler, I'm working off of power stations. So conserving power is important to me. And I can even use my um, phone to manage uh, the ASI Air Plus. Now, at my age, with my eyes, uh, this screen's a little bit too small for me. So the, uh, the tablet, Is, uh, is a bit of a compromise and, it, and it's a better, uh, better display for me. So, uh, so not only uh, is there the economics of the ASI Air Plus, um, there's the, the power side of it. Uh, I'm surprised on how little power the ASI Air Plus uh, is using during a night of imaging. And in future videos, I'll, I'll give you a, a better view of just what the power consumption looks like. But I can tell you it's quite, quite low, about 15 watts, 13 to 15 watts. And when I'm running my B-Link um, and my wireless router and uh, the Pegasus Astro Pocket Power Box Advanced that does require some power, uh, my power consumption is higher than 13 to 15 watts. And then there's the watts required for my laptop. So with the ASI Air Plus, I'm to able to take the laptop totally out of the, uh, the picture. And that's a big savings on, on power. But again, you know, everybody's uh, needs are a bit different, but I'm a traveler and I'm working off of power stations. So the power savings is another advantage to me. So. All right, I, I think that's about what I wanted to uh, share. Uh, focused on uh, new people that may be looking to put some kit together. Um, you know, they're just starting out in a hobby. They have a limited budget and they wanna try and stretch those budget dollars as far as they can. If you're comfortable, uh, let's say you're a DSLR shooter um, or, or you're comfortable with uh, ASI products like your auto, uh, electronic autofocuser and your guide camera and your filter wheel, then uh, clearly the ASI Air Plus is a consideration that uh, you should maybe consider. Um, and it might help you uh, stretch your budget dollars. If you're thinking about putting a second scope together like I did, um, it could be a good opportunity for your second scope uh, maybe move what you're using like I did over to your second scope and then backfill uh, your needs, your compute needs and uh, wireless needs and everything with an ASI Air Plus. Uh, just something to think about, but again, um, these three devices here, $680. This device here, $299. Um, clearly, um, this is a tremendous value if you ask me. Are there some limitations? Maybe, again, I've only been using this. I, I used it really for the first time out at Borrego Springs about a week and a half ago. Uh, in some future videos, I'll be doing some car comparisons about uh, the uh, using Nina versus using the ASI Air Plus. Um, so far, I've not seen any big uh, deficiency. Um, again, I made limited use of plugins in uh, Nina. Um, and, um, you know, so your experience may be different. You may be running uh, multiple manufacturer uh, configuration that's not straight ASI uh, and uh, ZWO ASI. And, and so maybe this solution might not work for you. All right, I, I think that's about it. Maybe uh, share your thoughts uh, if you're new and you're trying to stretch your budget dollars. Uh, what are some of the challenges that you're, you're having trying to spec out a, a system that works for you? Um, and if you're uh, a recent uh, starter uh, in this hobby and you decided to 
uh, purchase an ASI Air Plus or even maybe a Pro. Uh, share your thoughts about your experience with that device as well and maybe you can help some other people that are just starting in the hobby make some decisions of where they want to place their dollars uh, to get the optimum uh, system for their needs. All right, uh, that's about it. Um, it's going to be cloudy here, I think, <laughs> through the night of the 13th. I think the 14th is the next night uh, that uh, I'm going to have an opportunity to be out back here trying to dial in my uh, um, Edge uh, HD8. Uh, again, I'm, I'm chasing some elongated stars. Uh, I downloaded the Celestron uh, OAG manual. I'm going to step through uh, making sure all my back focus is correct. Uh, and eventually uh, I'll, be, uh, I'll be up in imaging. All right, if you like this kind of content, please give it a thumbs up as always. Uh, like, share, and subscribe. Um, thank you for dropping into the channel and I'd like to thank all the subscribers. Uh, you can expect some continued ASI Air uh, Plus content as I get more familiar with it and uh, explore some of the tools uh, experimental tools that are in this current version uh, on the ASI Air and then if I move forward to the next version once it's released I'll be sharing uh, some of uh, my experiences with that and I want to thank some of the ASI Plus users that have given me some tips on the uh, kind of the Sky Atlas framing opportunities and those type of things that information is very helpful so uh, I do appreciate that. All right well, wherever you may be in the world, uh, clear skies. Until next time.